<laughs> get a little extra show prep done. I've had to say that to people too. Yeah. Yeah. What do you? What do you? How do you? Chief Aaron Gibbons, the other voice you just heard there, City of Martinsburg, Chief of Police. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How is everybody? We're doing pretty well, man. Yeah. So do you, do you deal with uh, the officers in much the same way I have to deal with Mr. Bodwell? Yeah, but we carry guns. So <laughs> yes. it's a little bit more convincing when we say, make sure you're here early tomorrow. <laughs> that does make a big guns difference. Guns and tasers. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to get you, Bill, I'll get you a taser. There's a lot of finality in that. I like that. that. I like right? that. Yes. That's pretty good. It's, um, yeah, it's... You get you get going in the morning, and there's just so many things to get done. I mean, I started taking phone calls at seven o'clock this morning. I'm getting work done, yeah, and then I'm racing to get here. Yeah. Well, open season's pretty soon for Medicare, right? Yeah, August, October fourth, October fifteenth through December seventh. Everybody needs to get their Medicare plan reviewed. It's going to be crazy this year. That's uh, less yeah. than two months away. I never even thought about Medicare, but I guess it's that's because you're still a young guy. Yeah. Okay. So when it, I'll it, take it, I'll take yeah. it. It, it ends <laughs> on. December 1st? December 7th. December 7th. October 15th through December 7th. So if on December 10th somebody goes, oh, no, I should have done that, what happens? Are they just out of luck? Um, yeah, if they have a Medicare Advantage plan, they can still change that the first quarter of the year. But drug plans, other things, they're pretty much they're stuck for the year. So is that the uh, open enrollment? Yeah, open enrollment for Medicare. Okay. And it's uh, the Biden administration made a lot of changes this year that were – a lot of which not for the good that are going to change uh, plans are not going to be as good in some cases we've heard. Um, but there are going to be a lot of changes for seniors and every senior needs to look at their plan to make sure they're in the best possible plan. How do folks get in touch with you, Mr. Bodwell? 304-283-0864. Uh, We're in the Aiken Center, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, 304-283-0864 or Facebook, Bodwell Insurance just get in touch with us or get in touch with somebody. Don't get taken in by a call center. Don't don't get somebody, don't get scammed. Talk to a local agent, whether it's us or somebody else. Just make sure you get taken care of. Chief, uh, how long have you been the uh, top dog now in the city? Uh, just over a year. Just about a year? In, uh, June of, of last year. And when did you join the force? September, or I'm sorry, February of 2006. Was this your first police it was. Position. I was in corrections just prior. I was. I worked at the uh, Eastern Regional Jail mm -hmm. for four years. Yeah. And now as the chief, for about a year now, as you said, uh, when things happen in the city, people call you. you they do call me from folks. all over. <laughs> they do call me. I'm one of those people who call you. Yes. Uh, by the way. Yes. We had a little run here over the last couple of months that have uh, not typical of the city of Martinsburg and the area. But it's uh, there have been shootings and uh, people are concerned. Is it uh, is it safe to go into the city of Martinsburg? It, it is so safe to come into the city of Martinsburg. Each each incident is it's has its own merits, um, has its own uh, you know its own program as you would. Um, there are you know you have the shooting incident that happened in Spring Mills. You had the the one that happened over on. Uh, East Ray Street, each one of those are their own individual calls for service. So you can't, you know, as a totality of it, you know, were guns involved? Guns are in, were involved, and are they an issue? They are, but crime guns are an issue, you know. Had a conversation with the ATF here uh, Thursday, Friday, when they uh, did a summit over at the police department. You know, nobody's really interested in that gun that's sitting in your nightstand. They're, they're interested in the crime guns. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these are crime guns that are being used specifically to commit crimes. So, you know, you have the shooting that happened over on East Ray Street um, where we wound up getting that one solved. Um, the one in Spring Mills, those just started at the right at the turn of the year. Um, and then this um, individual that came in from Washington State over on uh, North Queen Street, you know, th that was a three month period where we had three very serious shootings all all solved um and now you have this one last tuesday and the atf works great with us you know we had this call last tuesday with these two young individuals who were in an apartment together um, apparently they were friends or at least good acquaintances we're not sure what happened during this call or during this shooting um, we know that they were getting along at one point but Having the ATF come in and, and uh, trace these guns, that's very important because nobody was on scene other than these two individuals, as far as we know. Um, just the information that we have for the shooting last Tuesday, uh, it was on East Burke Street, 
<clears throat> two younger individuals. Um, as far as we know, um, they were getting along and something went really, really wrong inside that apartment. It was a very close quarter shooting. And when I, um, when I arrived, one individual was already deceased and the other one was being um, transported to the hospital and de was deceased not long thereafter. Um, again, it comes down to the ballistics. We had somebody go down for the autopsy. One of our detectives went down for the autopsy. Autopsy. The West Virginia State Police immediately came in with a crime lab. My detectives went and got a search warrant, and uh, along with the task force, and they worked. They worked this case mm -hmm. uh, piece by piece. And from what we can gather, is it, it was just those two individuals in that apartment, and something went really wrong, and they and they opened up on each other and that's that's a horrible circumstances i know that um uh i want to believe that you know maybe somebody else was involved but from what it looks like right now they were the only two involved and they got into some sort of argument or altercation and and they just started shooting at each other so mm -hmm. but that until we have something back from ballistics saying that maybe there was another gun involved or another individual was seen walking in the back door. Um, that's what we have right now. And it's very unfortunate. And I wish, you know, we could, we could just foresee what, what had happened between those two individuals, but two people losing their lives over who knows what it was, um, completely uncalled for. Was that a single family residence or an apartment? It was an apartment. Was there <clears throat> nobody else you know, sharing a wall was hard. Well, that's that's one thing I will give to the, between the task force and the rest of our patrol guys is they canvassed that entire area. They went door to door looking for ring doorbell cameras. If you saw anything, if you heard anything, um, we put that information out. If you do know anything or even suspect something, you know, make sure you reach out to us. But those guys canvassed. They went door to door talking to all the neighbors everybody was very cooperative every neighbor you know whether they heard something saw something they were very cooperative and we did get some video from uh residents in the area so let me uh <clears throat> let me say something as a 28 year martinsburg resident mm -hmm. this this city is safe i mean i walk around at 10 o'clock at night downtown without any problem i don't i don't even think about it and I know there are people in our listening audience who say, oh, I don't want to go to da downtown Martinsburg. is one of the safest places you're ever going to be. I mean, the, the city police do a phenomenal job. They're all over the place. But just in general, I mean, there are isolated incidents. There are isolated incidences of stupidity and people losing their lives over, over dumb things everywhere. But as far as crime goes and everything else, the city of Mar I I've never had an issue even thought about not being in downtown Martinsburg. It's 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 safe all hours of the day and night. Yeah, and it is these these few incidents that um, do set a reputation of sorts, um, but uh, few and far between. We, I I would I would guess to say that Martinsburg is extremely safe. Um, you know when, and you take comparatively speaking for calls for service that these officers are responding to when you have literally a couple minutes between each call or from getting a call to responding a call. We have a hard time putting computers in cars because what information are you collecting in a matter of a minute or two? You know, so that's just one of those things, comparatively speaking to the state police or the county, if you're, if you're on a traffic stop, if you're an officer on a traffic stop, you have another officer there within, sometimes within seconds. Uh, if you have a call, an emergency call in the city of Martinsburg, whether it's downtown or out on the outskirts, you have an officer there within minutes compared to the county or the state, you know, those local, those larger agencies that are covering three, 400 square miles, um, where it may be 20, 30 minutes before they can actually respond to the call. So the city in that aspect is very safe. Um, is there a crime element? There is a crime element in the city of Martinsburg. However, it's minute compared to a lot of the other cities, you know, in our area. So. Uh, I do agree, and I appreciate that very much. Um, I do consider Martinsburg an extremely safe place to be and to shop and to live. Um, but, yeah. When you're right, so the, I mean, your response times are, are amazing. I mean, any time, if you're just, I spend a lot of time in downtown Martinsburg. I have a lot of business there. I was a downtown business owner before we moved on to Aikens. Um, they are, they get there fast. I mean, anytime anything happens, there are, you know, three, four cars there. 
immediately. I mean, your response times, and I've heard I've heard horror stories out in the county. Just, I mean, nothing, nothing against the sheriff's department. I mean, they do a phenomenal job, but they're patrolling three, four hundred square miles, like you said. It's which is really, really hard. Right. I think it was last week we had Pastor Tim Garino on, and of course his his corner of the universe is is different, right? It's very concentrated on on the drug users and, and people recovering from addiction and what have you. And he went on at some length. I don't know if you heard the show or not, but talking about the big drug bust that happened with the members of the Sinaloa cartel and MS-13 and all this and, and, and the bad element. And, and he painted a fairly dire picture of that perhaps being only the tip of the iceberg, that these guys, the cartels only send their troops to places where there's a lot of money to be made. And if you, if you can catch whatever that was, 25 people, it's a big number of people, that that is likely just a small percentage of the people who are actually operating here. Any thoughts on on that hypothesis well you have i mean that's that's two aspects as far as the chief of police goes make sure our local area is safe and these elements aren't creeping in on your <clears throat> on your location and then you have the national uh, uh nationwide um i mean i agree to a point it's it's normally just the tip of the iceberg but at least you're chipping away at mm -hmm. that iceberg and uh but as far as that element coming into our our city, um, you know we have um, uh, we have gang intelligence. We have uh, we actually host our gang intelligence conference uh, here in Martinsburg, um, and it's not because we have a high concentration of gang of a gang element, but it's just we have to be in the know. And if you're not in the, if you're not in the know, then you're then you're falling behind. So. We want to, yeah. We want to make sure that we we nip that in the bud. That if it does start coming here, we're, you know, hopefully, hopefully able to slow it down. What I mean, what do you foresee? What are, what are some of the? I mean, he just brought up gangs. So, what are some of the issues, other issues you see, as we're expanding? I mean, obviously, the city of Martinsburg is is a certain amount of miles. We're not gaining that many people in the city, but the county is growing you know, phenomenally. And a lot of those people, we want them in the city shopping and doing everything. What, what do you foresee some of the problems are? Well, traffic is always a, a big issue. We were just having that discussion on roundabouts, unless we make a beltway around the city of Martinsburg. I don't see that coming anytime soon, but, um, I, I, I think progress is, is, um, is great, especially for downtown businesses. Um, my wife being a business owner, I can, I can, can I can attribute to that. What is that business chief? Uh, this is everything cheesecake in Martinsburg. Yes. Uh, Say that again. It just sounds everything good. cheesecake. Oh yeah, everything maybe. cheesecake. Yes. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not necessarily just the the chief of police. I'm the cheesecake woman's husband. Yet, what did cheesecake he not lady. bring? Yeah. Cheesecake. Yeah, not bring cheesecake. Why? Why do we invite him and not her? She would have brought cheesecakes. He was. He's the chief she taste would've. tester. When there's a new type of cheesecake that gets rolled out, he he gets to taste it first. Yeah, I that can't. Is, I can't get my hands too close to cheesecake. I will scarf it down. So. Chief, on a, a serious topic, uh, going back, uh, we had Sheriff Casey Bohr out of Morgan County on recently in regards to the shooting up in Morgan County. And the app that promotes these parties that uh, the word goes out and whoever, you don't have to know the person. Unlike when we were young and you had a party and you invited the people you know, now it's anybody who wants to get on the app and, and attend, which brings another element of issues. Uh, and they experienced it there. He said that they were working uh, with you, with, uh, with uh, uh, the, sh the sheriff and uh, Rob Blair in, in Berkeley County, other locations as well because of how this spreads out. Are you familiar with this app, and have you seen the same thing in Martinsburg, minus, of course, the shooting at the party? I have not seen the same issue inside the city limits. I have seen it within our area, um, specifically in Morgan County. I know that a lot of these have happened in um, Winchester, um, or in the Winchester area, Virginia. Uh, you know, they're, they're focusing a lot on these Airbnbs, and that's something that these apps, the VR, you know, the, the Airbnb, yeah, these Airbnb apps need to really lock down and uh, put a little bit more weight on, especially when they're destroying these houses. And even if it's not a shooting and they're destroying these houses, you know, that's something that they need to, that they need to lock down. So, but inside the city limits, we haven't had, knock on wood, uh, any incidents that I know of um, specifically from this app, but uh, you can 
rest assured that it's if it's if it's happening it's either going to be nipped in the bud now or it's going to continue until we really have a serious problem but i don't foresee a serious problem if we're recognizing it now and we're getting on top of it so there's only so much time of the day and there's only so much manpower that you have but is that an app that you actively monitor to find out where the next party might be and where if it's in the city so you can be on the alert for it um i don't um i don't specifically watch that app i know there are members on the task force that do mm -hmm. so just leave it at that fair enough i like the way you smiled at that <laughs> one so it's, it's time to party we just hit the app and we're we're out there yeah i'm sure i'm sure if 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 there's a party inside the city of martinsburg and and uh we do pick it up on this app there's going to be quite a police presence whether it's on <laughs> whether it's on duty or off duty i can't say i, I want to uh, go back to this this drug bust for a minute with, with the folks who were arrested who handles is it a is it a there has to be a reason why they were here and not someplace else right so who handles who gathers that intel is that something local folks do is that a federal issue are you I presume you're going to be you dialed be, into the... You would be surprised at how much information you can collect or how much investigation actually begins just from a simple phone call from an individual in the public. So you have a resident that has a concern about a house, and then I call a couple of the de detectives or somebody on the task force and say, hey, do me a favor, keep an eye on this house. And that in itself, that one phone call sparked this huge investigation, not saying this one in particular, mm -hmm. probably, um, but we get calls like that all the time and it's just you have to take each individual uh case and just grow with it and you know i don't want to say that we're not interested in the in the smaller involved individuals but you really work these smaller involved individuals into these great um drug busts and then you're really making a difference in the community so but um i don't i don't really foresee um that large gang affiliation presence inside the city of, of Martinsburg. Um, I do the, know that there is a presence, as uh, small as it may be. Um, we just don't, we just want to keep it under control. And doing big drug busts like this does keep it under control. Do you sense that the, the drug problem in general is, is growing, um, decreasing? About the same within the city? The drug problem in the city, as well as the county, evolves and changes almost yearly. So two or three years ago, it was a huge fentanyl problem. I'm not going to say fentanyl is not a, still a problem because it really is. But you sit there and recognize that, that overdose from, um, from uh, fentanyl has decreased in the state of West Virginia by 25% in the past you know, few years. But then you start seeing a bunch of crack on the streets. So now we're floating back towards crack being on the streets and there's a lot of it. And then it'll switch back over to meth or boot or molly or something like that. It constantly evolves. So there's always a drug presence. It's just what drug is on the street at the time. A lot usually of that, the same players, just different it, drugs? It usually is the same players. Um, it usually is the same players. A lot of this stuff comes in through Baltimore, as I understand it, doing interviews in the past. That's been identified as a place where a lot of the drugs that flow into Martinsburg come it's su from. surprising that stuff comes from Baltimore. It is. I know. I'm, well, I'm shocked. I just went and picked up my son at BWI the other night, and it took me an hour and, you know, a little bit to get there. The same with D.C. You know, we're very close proximity. We have the mm -hmm. 81 corridor. Um it might not be as prevalent as the 95 corridor, but there's a lot of traffic on 81 and getting now we don't have any any portion of 81. Right. At some there are some times where I really wish we did have a portion of 81, except for the accident portion. Um, but um, a lot of that traffic does flow through the city of Martinsburg, whether it's coming down through Harpers Ferry across or if it's it's um, coming down 81 and making stops. Some of our, the biggest busts I've ever been involved in. We're just along the interstate. Somebody mm -hmm. just jumping off the interstate real quick to swing by a rocks or a sheet. So, my uh, one of my neighbors is a retired Maryland state trooper, and uh, they've been my neighbor for 24 years. So we've had a lot of talks over the over the years, and one of those is about the trafficking that comes down from New York to Baltimore and ultimately flows this way. And he told me in many cases it's actually the same person in the same car, and the police are aware of it. 
right? Because you, when you work out, if you're a trooper along a highway, you notice the cars that come by. Right. You don't, as you said, you don't have that access to I-81, but do you see a similarity in, in regards to the city streets? Uh, do you see the similarities usually when we, when we do an auction for um, vehicles that we have seized? They don't get those cars back. At least in the city, we don't allow them to get those cars back. Um, and we do seize a lot of vehicles. So it's usually the same players, different vehicles. A lot of times they'll use mules. Um, some of the biggest busts I've been involved in were people just transporting for someone else. Um, we had a huge load of fentanyl that we caught. Just a lady was in a bathroom too long, and it, it wasn't even the rocks is in the county. The woman was in the bathroom too long. They got concerned that this lady was in the bathroom, and I just happened to be in there getting a drink with one of my buddies, and um, that was one of the biggest busts that we had inside the city. Um, and she was coming from South Carolina, North Carolina to New York with a load of, with a shipment of fentanyl. Are you finding most of the people who are involved in the drug trade are from out of town or you, do you get a lot of locals who sort of coordinate with them? I think there's a lot of locals that coordinate with them because they realize that um, that's dangerous but easy money, um, comparatively speaking, um, inside the city limits. And if there's money to be made, um, through drugs, then um, there are people out there that are going to take advantage of it. So, I mean, they they do obviously coordinate with um, individuals from Baltimore, from New York, from D.C., um, and some, especially this, uh, we had a really big um, drug roundup uh, just, well, I guess it's been probably January. We had a huge 60, 70 yeah. individuals. Um, that was a huge roundup in that that keyed in on one individual in Baltimore. Chief, thanks so much for coming in today. We appreciate your time as always. Thank you for, for having me on. You have another test coming up for employment anytime in the near future? Uh, yes, we do. It's on the, um, let's see, September 21st at 9 a.m. We are hiring. Um, right now we're in a position where we're, we're getting back up to staff, which is excellent. And uh, hopefully by this winter we will be up to staff. So come out and test um, on the 21st of September. Very good. Thanks, Chief. We appreciate it. Thank you.